Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, I want to continue talking about the type system, type conversions, and just how things work in C++. Now we've looked at things a little bit and understood that one of the reasons that we really like the C++ language is for its type safety. That said, on occasion, we have to necessarily break the type safety that we have and look at or treat the actual bits as different pieces of information that is different types. Behind the scenes, if you go ahead and look at compiled code, you know, machine code really is just numbers. But again, it's important from the compiler's perspective to understand what the actual underlying data type is and for us as programmers to have some sort of guarantee. Now, that said, I want to go ahead and show you what can kind of go wrong when we let the compiler take care of how to treat our different types and give you at least one or two tools to prevent that. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at some code. So I've got this example from last time where I was showing the result here, how we were able to treat this uh, character here as a result if we can fit this number representation in the smaller data type. And again, that's fine. And then I casted out the value here so we could print out and actually see the value here. But what I want to do this time is actually take you back a little bit and just draw a number line here. So on this number line, I'm going to draw some numbers here. It's how you probably learned math way long ago, but I think it's going to be useful for this illustration just to keep things straight here. And on this number line, I've got I here for negative two. So I'll go ahead and put this value here. And then I've got an unsigned int U for uh, value one here. So I'll go ahead and put this here. So numbers on this side of the number line are greater than numbers on this side of the number line. I think that's fair to do. So let's go ahead and run this code and just go ahead and see what happens when I compare these results here. So I'll just go ahead and compare I, which is the value negative two to the value of one here. So let's go ahead and compile this and I'll run it. And well, we get Huh? <laughs> and that's sort of the result here. So this is saying that this value i is greater than u. But again, on our number line, that's not quite true. Now, why does this happen in C++, which is also a behavior that's inherited from C? And the idea here is that, well, when we have a negative number, we have to represent the bits in a specific way. This is called two's complement. And I won't really get into that, but basically the idea is when we're comparing the bits of I here, it'll end up looking something like, or maybe it's a little bit easier if I look at U here, where I have the value uh, number one here. So a bunch of zeros here, uh, et cetera, and then a one here. But to get the two's complement representation, you essentially flip these bits here uh, and add one. Uh, that's usually what we do. So you get a bigger number, something that looks like this in your representation for I. So when the compiler looks at these bits and does the comparison of this signed versus unsigned type, it actually gets confused and says, well, of course I is greater than you. I see more, you know, ones here. This must be a bigger number here. In fact, if you look at the most significant digit here, it'll end up a one, which is going to be greater than what we see here in the actual bit representation. So that lies the problem. So what can we do in order to prevent this? Well, the first thing that we can do is just use our compiler. It's something that, again, sees all the code, so this can be really useful for us. So let me give you a really useful compiler flag that you should start using with pretty much all the code that you generate. And I'll try to do this more frequently in the series uh, to catch myself, but we wanna enable warnings here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here, and you'll see that we get a warning here because this is so common that it's saying, hey, you're comparing different data types int and unsigned, are you aware of this? And again, this is going to cause a problem when we're mixing comparison of a signed type, like an integer with a unsigned type here, and the values happen to be positive and negative. We're going to get the wrong comparison. So that's one of our tools that we can use. The second tool that I want to introduce you to, and I'm going to drag in a window here, is from, of course, CPP reference. Since C++20, we do have some of these tools in our utility library, like compare greater that we can use here that will, in general, do the right thing here. And it's actually got a little example here showing that uh, negative one compared with the unsigned value zero. Well, if we just compare that, it unfortunately is going to show up as true. But what we really want is to do the proper conversion uh, and compare negative one uh, to zero and show that this is false. Negative one is not greater than zero. So let me go ahead and show you quickly how to do that here in our C++ code. So I'll go ahead and uh, add this 
uh, comparison here. So again, comparing to see if i is greater than u, and this time it should not print here. And I'll go ahead and get rid of the noise from our previous example, um, just so we don't have it. And of course, to use this compare greater, we need the utility library. So let me go ahead and compile this with our warnings. Again, you'll notice that we get a warning here on this first one. But when I run this code this time, this should not print and in the, indeed it doesn't. So we don't get that comparison here. So again, we have to be careful because behind the scenes, sometimes the compiler is implicitly uh, doing this comparison here, but thinking about the representation. So again, this is something I would think about in that casting category, but we do have some tools in the utility header to do the correct comparison if you're doing direct number comparisons like this. So I'd recommend that you use them. So folks, with that said, just a few tools, use compare greater if you're doing direct number comparisons and worried about signed unsigned types if you're not able to uh, you know, if you must treat numbers as unsigned and int and you're just not sure and somehow have to do a comparison later on, uh, you have a tool for that. But probably most important is just to enable those warnings on your compiler so that you do have a tool to prevent yourself from having these mistakes in your code. All right, folks, I hope that was useful. We'll continue talking about casting and some more different ways of representing data in the next lesson. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Comment below if you've used some of these things or if you've run into a nasty bug. I'd love to hear about it. And with that said, folks, I'll see you next time.